In my family's case, big picture success means getting out of nearly $130,000 worth of debt and moving towards financial independence and early retirement. So today I'm going to share how we're budgeting to reach our goals. But before I do that, I do wanna mention that my husband and I do have separate finances for the most part. We have a joint mortgage account, but that's pretty much our only joint account. I know that's controversial to some people, uh, but it works for us, honestly. When we first got together, we had our own separate accounts, we had our own separate debts. We sit down and we budget everything once a month, but all of our accounts are separate and it does, it works for us. But because my husband and I do have separate accounts, this video is really just gonna go over my personal budget. All right, so we'll start with my income. I work 24 hours a week, so 48 hours per pay period. I do Saturdays and Sundays, 12 hour shifts um, at a hospital because I am a registered nurse. I work in the recovery room uh, and I work as part of what they call the weekend program. So um, it's basically like um, what you would call like in-house call. I'm there 12 hours. If we have six surgeries, cool, I'm there for that. If we have no surgeries, then I'm also there for that. So my base rate is $43 an hour. Um, on top of that, I do have a weekend differential because I do work Saturday and Sunday. So $8.50 on top of that $43 an hour. And then I also make an additional $2.50 an hour because I am the charged nurse on my unit. And then sometimes I pick up Saturday night call uh, between my Saturday and Sunday shifts when they don't have anyone available to work that position. And that typically happens once or twice a month. This helps out tremendously <laughs> when it comes to my income. Um, they definitely, you know, pay a premium for somebody to pick up those shifts. So working call overnight means when an emergency surgery comes in to the hospital that can't wait until the morning, I have to go in and help recover that patient. If I get called in, I get what's called time and a half. It's my normal base rate plus half of my hourly wage on top of that. So it's pretty good money when I get called in and when you're on call, you can kind of anticipate that you probably will uh, get called in for at least a couple hours that night. So based on my normal shifts and then the one to two call shifts that I pick up per month, my salary can fluctuate a little bit. Uh, I typically make between $1,800 to $2,500 after taxes. That's my take home uh, per pay period. So per month I'm making $3,600 to $5,000 take home. I always budget according to the least amount of money that I can bring home. So I always make my budget according to that $3,600. Anything that I happen to make over that 3,600, it's just icing. <laughs> um, and that just goes right towards the debt snowball. All right, so I'm gonna break down my monthly budget by monthly expenses and then um, annual expenses, you know, things that are only showing up once a year um, and then a couple things that show up um, two or three times a year. So uh, for food, each month, uh, my budget is $200. Uh, my mortgage that I split with my husband, um, I pay $1,200 a month on that. Um, I have a Bank of America credit card and my minimum on that is $112. Um, and then my, um, I pay for our phone. Uh, our bill is $290 on that. And the reason that is so much is because when I decided to start doing uh, YouTube, I was trying to think of the simplest way I could do it. So I just bought an iPhone 14 Pro um, and also an iPad to edit on. And so I financed that through Verizon. That's why um, it's $290 per month. Uh, for gas, I uh, budget $200 a month. Um, I don't go a ton of places besides work and then maybe to the store during the week, so that is why um, I'm able to not spend a ton on gas. 
Uh, my car payment, that is 450 a month. I'm hoping that that will be paid off within the next year. Um, I also have a Wells Fargo credit card and the minimum on that is currently $134. Um, we do have solar panels on our house. Um, so the loan payment on that is 87 per month. Um, Excel, you know, our solar takes care of most of our electricity, uh, but there's a little bit of uh, spillover that um, you know, the solar panels don't take care of. So um, we also have an XL, a monthly XL bill, and that's also our gas. So right now that's about $30 per month. Um, do have a piece of land that we purchased a couple years ago, um, northwest of Fort Collins that eventually we wanna build something on. So we do have a small mortgage on that, and that uh, payment is $159 a month. Um, I do therapy about twice a month, and the copay on that is uh, $32, so $64 per month on that. Um, I do have a stash um, brokerage account, and I know it's kind of silly to have that, but it's almost, I only put $5 a week into it, so it's almost more for like entertainment purposes. Um, but so that's about $20 a month. And then the, their fee I think is roughly $3 a month. So let's say 23 a month. Um, and then other uh, subscriptions, I've got Netflix and that costs $16 per month. And then I have Spotify that is $11 a month. And then there's um, my Prime account, and that is $17. Um, I also have, it's called Privacy Assist, and it's kind of like a LifeLock type thing, just monitoring my social security number and all my accounts and everything, and that is $13 a month. Um, and then uh, Sinking Fund, that is going to be all of my annual and biannual expenses added up and then divided by 12. Um, it's just kind of a way to pay for bigger ticket items, uh, you know, by breaking it up into a more manageable monthly fee that you're putting in savings and then withdrawing when it comes time to pay for it. So uh, moving on to annual or biannual or triannual expenses, um, our travel trailer, uh, the, t the tags for that. Um, this year it was about $300. Um, a new one, Epidemic Sound, since I decided to start a YouTube channel, um, that's gonna be a new subscription, but the annual cost uh, is gonna be 118. Um, our garbage is something that I pay for, and that is usually every three months about $95. So paying that four times a year um, comes to 380. Um, my car tags, uh, about 300 also per year. Uh, car insurance, I pay my premium twice a year. Um, and so that ends up being 489 every six months. Um, so times two, that would equal 978 per year. Um, NSO, uh, that is my nursing malpractice insurance. Um, I've gotten that renewed since I was a new grad. Um, and it's a little bit pricey, but it's, it's good peace of mind to have, um, you know, when you are uh, a nurse. So that comes out to $141. Um, on that per year um, and then we have house property taxes and that um, I split with my husband so um, the projected 
property taxes for next year are going to be $2,000. So um, $1,000 of that will be my responsibility. Um, and then we have property taxes on our land. And that is gonna be a little bit cheaper. It's a thousand a year, so split with my husband. 500 of that is my responsibility. Um, and then on our lands, we actually have um, two HOAs that we pay for. And I mean, together, it's about $1,000 a year. So again, splitting that with my husband, uh, my portion of that would be 500. Um, and then car maintenance, so for oil changes, I'm fortunate enough that um, my husband does my oil changes, which is really awesome. Um, it you know comes to about like 160 a year uh, to get like the oil for the oil changes, and um, and then he's my free labor, which is awesome. But <laughs> 160 for that. Um, then our federal income taxes. Uh, I don't typically save money separately for that. We usually take out extra money um, from our pay, like have our employer take out extra money from our paycheck uh, and put that away. Um, so like, you know, for instance, I have my normal federal income taxes uh, coming out, but then I also have my employer take out an extra 200 per paycheck to put towards that. Um, and then we also have, you know, two kids to claim. Um, so we, you know, usually don't, have to pay too much or we're hoping we won't have to pay too much in taxes this year or we'll break even or maybe even get a little bit back so that's not going to be included in my annual expenses um, but then gifts uh, you know for Christmas and birth birthdays and anniversaries um, you know I <clears throat> am going to try to put away about 500 to pull out for that and remember you know because my husband and I have separate finances like that's only half of what you know we end up um, spending on on gifts throughout the year so um, all of that uh, added up together uh, is going to come to uh, about five thousand and two dollars per year Right, so everything added up, my monthly expenses plus the, um, you know, $417, uh, which is my sinking fund, so that's my yearly expenses broken up um, into 12 month uh, payments. Um, All together per month, my monthly expenses are $3505. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as I had mentioned earlier, because my husband and I have separate expenses, um, there's a couple things that you might not see here or here, and that is because um, my husband Josh pays for those. So he takes care of our internet and our water, and he also does our homeowner's insurance. And um, he also pays for our travel trailer. And then also um, we have like an exercise bike and he pays for the, uh, like the subscription for that. So it's, um, he pays for the iFit subscription. Um, so yeah, he takes care of those things. Uh, and that is, you know, pretty much our budget broken down. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, my income can kind of fluctuate uh, anywhere between 3,600 per month uh, to 5,000 a month. And that's after, that's my take home, that's after taxes and, and a retirement account and everything, you know, else comes out of their benefits. Um, so as I mentioned, my kind of um, monthly expenses, you know, with everything uh, ends up being 3505 uh, and so you can see there's kind of a <laughs> big difference between you know what I can put towards the debt snowball every month um, if I'm just working kind of my minimal uh, you know my minimal shifts per pay period my 
48 hours, um, you know, I really only have about a hundred dollars, ninety-five dollars um, to put towards the debt snowball. Um, but if I just pick up those one to two um, extra shifts, you know, the call shifts per month, then the amount that I can put towards the debt snowball goes up tremendously um, to about you know almost fifteen hundred dollars. So. Uh, you know, I really do try to pick up at least those two shifts a month, um, you know, to make that debt snowball roll a little bit faster. So let's talk about a couple things with this budget. So I know $200 a month seems pretty slim for a food budget for a family of four, but remember my husband and I split costs. so we typically spend a little bit more than double that on food per month, but 200 is what I personally can budget. Also, I know it's a bit frivolous to have as many subscriptions as we do, but when you're trapped at home with a baby, it's kind of nice to have like a ton of different entertainment options. Okay, so how do we stay motivated through this whole debt payoff process? So we actually find it really helpful to keep track of uh, the debt that we've paid off, our remaining balances, and then also um, like the amounts in our retirement accounts. That's you know what keeps us motivated. So we actually just bought a chalkboard from Target, and it has on there uh, you know all of our listed on one side all of our accounts and the balances that we still owe, um, and then at the bottom we total it so we know exactly how much we have left to pay off on the other side of the board uh, total every three months we total the amounts in our savings and in our in our investment accounts um, so that's on that side of the board um, and then in the middle we have um, just the total amount of debt that we've paid off so far in this journey at the top of the board we have um, our goals so a short-term goal is usually whatever debt we are targeting currently uh, then we have a mid-range goal, which is in a couple years, and that really is, you know, getting out of debt, followed by saving up for a second down payment on a house, um, and then uh, also, you know, doing a proper emergency fund, uh, and um, also saving college funds for the kids. So those are kind of our midterm goals that we're really looking for in the next couple years, and then. Um, 10 years from now, our long-term goal is the goal of early retirement, or at least semi-early retirement, where maybe we only have to work, you know, one day a week, that kind of a thing. So having this up in our main living space uh, is really motivating and kind of helps us stay focused on the goals at hand. In my next couple of videos, I'll go over our money saving strategies that we're using uh, to help stick to our budget uh, while we try to get out of debt. If you want to see why and how my debt-free journey began, you can look at this video here or maybe here. I'm not sure how this worked yet. <laughs> okay, but that's gonna end this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.